about uh, not analyzing but introducing the universal opening, universal opening for white. And when I say universal opening, this is the kind of opening that you cannot have for black. Universal, that means no matter what black does, you can play same positional setup and same strategy. You don't have this luxury for black for the reason that white starts first, has opening an advantage of first move. And the same way against e4, d4, or c4 may result to very bad consequences. Okay, so the opening I'm talking to is <clears throat> King's Indian attack. So, you know, you play like King's Indian, like the black plays, d6, knight f6, g6, bishop g7, and castling. Only you do this uh, with white. The reason why I call it attack, because it doesn't mean that you start attacking for first moves, because they have to now differentiate the king's Indian. Is it white or black? So they call it attack, but the, it's not an attack. It's just a system you're going to play. So you're going to start with knight f3, and no matter what black plays, you guaranteed to get the same setup. There is absolutely nothing black can do to stop you developing d3, g3, bishop g2, and castling. So they can go d5, they can go knight f6. It's a universal way for white. Now, the main and the most expected way uh, to play for black is knight f6. Now you're going to go g3. They can go, I don't know, d5, bishop g2, probably e6. Of course, the black can play with g6. We will, we will cover this continue. g6 or bishop f5 instead. There are many different ways. So in this position, so we go castle, we continue with our plan. Black can go bishop e7 on c5, it does not really make much difference. d3. Now this opening, uh, okay, what is this strategy? Why would we play this opening? What are the advantages? Every, 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 any, every opening has some advantages, some disadvantages. What is the main idea to play this opening? Advantage now? What? Yeah, that's... Uh, I, will, I will think if it qualifies as one of the reasons. Top of the list, anyway. So, yeah, it's a something, you have this strategy, you know what you want to do in the end game. Yeah, to avoid some critical variations, and it's like a lazy way to play opening. That's not what I would recommend, but you may also put it on the list of the reasons. But the mainly is that uh, you gonna get positions that you guaranteed that it will be no simplifications for black, and it's not black cannot play something to quickly equalize or uh, to exchange a lot of pieces that will can lead to a draw or something like that. You guaranteed full-scale battle here. It's going to be, and you know your plan, knight d2, e4, and you have one general plan that you execute throughout whole game. Uh, well, whose move is one, two, three, four, five, four, five. Now, I would say this is the most expected position in this opening. I would go knight d2 because our plan is to play e4 and bishop e7. The reason why I would say that this is not, uh, the main reason is not to avoid all the opening theory because even Fisher played it and Fisher knew opening theory as good as anyone. And he played it repeatedly several times. Interesting that if you look at this position, Fischer did not play knight f3, d3, and g2 moves. 
you can get it from French defense. You may say this was a French, and here is this. Let me show you what I mean by that. If you remember the position we just had, So, e4, e6, it's a different opening. Now you can go, well d4 is typical for e5, and if you go knight d2, c5, knight f3, knight c6, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7 and the castle. This is exact transposition. So you can get it from Sicilian too. If you go e4, c5, d3, or knight f3, e6, d3, you can transpose. You have an idea? I don't have to put all, all the pieces. So you can get it from there too. So in this position, what is our plan with white to basically to, if black castles, which is the most expected way to play, although there is a frequently played with b6. So um, castle, this is like a main position of all this opening. White has very strong pawn on e5 that restricts black's movement in the center. At the same time, needs some attention. So if black goes queen c7, we will play queen e2. How do we play this position? We have to create an attack on the king side. You see, this is very far from, from happening now. Black can start playing on queen side, or black can try to blow up the e5 square by playing f6. If black plays f6, our general plan changes. On f we just take. Obviously, black must take with a knight to protect the e6 pawn. And now we have a weak square on e5. Now, how do you exploit this square? Well, 95 is a wrong way to do it. The reason why, because you want to control the square. If you play 95, you're going to lose control of the square. Because queen takes, now it's going to bishop d6, queen e2. Do you have control of e5 square? Definitely not. To control the square, you have to restrict black from moving e5, and at the same time, put the piece on e5 and keep it on e5. If you go knight e5, he's going to take and play bishop d6. You cannot hold your uh, knight on e5. So the correct move would be like knight f1, because, now, suppose black plays some random move like bishop d7. Now you can go bishop f4, and after queen moves somewhere, then you can go knight e5, and you see you're solidly controlling this e5 square. Now, let's try to make some moves for black that make sense in this position. So, black knows it too, and they try to prevent <coughs> white from gaining control of that square. They can try to play bishop d6. <coughs> now what's going to happen? Um, does black want to play e5 or not? Yes. Black wants to try to play e5 in, and get some uh, strong position in the center. It's going to be very difficult for them to do. We can go even c3 or maybe even bishop g5. Well, let me tell you what is going to happen if black plays e5. When black plays e5, they have th three pawns in its center. But when you have three pawns standing like this, they need attention. 
pieces that can attack the center. So there is, which one of these three pawns is the weakest? Yeah, so we start attacking this pawn and trying to make black push d4 and then we're gonna gain the control on e4 square. How we do that? Obviously, to get the pressure on this pawn, we have to pressure the knight that protects this pawn. So we're gonna go bishop g5, and let's see what's gonna happen here. Um, suppose black plays h6. We take, take, and now we have a target, e5. So we can go knight d2, or we can go knight e3. They both reach the same result. Black protects, white attacks. Black is gonna run out of the ways to protect this pawn. Because now let's see what they can do. Suppose they seven. Black has very strong center that has to be um, Attacked. So we can go knight g4. That may create problems attacking rook. And after rook f5, maybe even bishop h3, creating all kinds of threats. Or even in this position, instead of playing bishop g5, there is probably. After bishop d6, uh, this is position. There's another good way to play for white, c4. This is very good way to play. Now black practically cannot go d4 because it opens white bishop. It gives full control on e4 square. Actually, we're going to go like this, knight d2, knight and total control on e4 square. But by playing c4, we prevent black from playing e5. And if black goes bishop d7, we can go bishop g5 now. Or even bishop d2 if you play. And then maybe knight g5, maybe knight e3, attacking this pawn. Anyway, what you have to do if black goes f6, let me go again. Let me go back here. But every time we go back, since there is no contact between whites and black pieces, we have to count the uh, tempos and make sure that we didn't steal any tempo from any side. This is position, and black goes f6. Okay, in this position, the other possibility is bishop f4 move. Um, now, actually we just played, is this the position or knight is on d2? We have, what? Uh, we're gonna find out in a second. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, <coughs> seven, nine. Black's move, knight is on d2, f6. We have to take, and we will take. And after bishop, I mean, after knight takes, we're gonna go c4. Now, definitely d4 is out of question. And uh, on bishop d6, I just want to ask you, what would you play in this position? I, want, I may want to keep my knight on d2, because in case of d4, I have knight coming here. I may go b3 and go bishop b2. This pawn will always stay on e6. It will never move. Anytime 
they move this get into a serious problem here. Knight takes d5, pawn takes knight takes d5, and even knight takes e5, attacking this knight with a bishop. So if, see, this is the, the strategy that we, when we play b3 now, we know this pawn cannot move because we immediately get full possession on this square, knight g5 and knight e4. This pawn cannot move. That means this pawn's kind of froze. And then we go bishop b2 and put the knight on e5. So this is solid, very solid and very a uh, reliable positional plan. Now we're going back to this position. <coughs> well, we just discussed F6, but most frequently you see B5 and A5, <coughs> because this, you see, these three pawns will indicate what side should black play on. You see, they are aiming, structure aiming towards the queen side. And white structure pawns go like this, aiming to king side. So white plays on this side, and they have some kind of space advantage on king side, as well as black has on king's, uh, queen side. B5, and here, white, when there is a one side attacks on king side, white, <coughs> and white. so whoever is first is going to succeed. So we have to have a clear plan how we're going to play on this side. We're going to go knight f1, white, black goes. Now, what is the way? How are we going to try to assault black's king position? H4. Okay, h4. Suppose it goes b4. No, h5 is very wrong because you get coming to the dead end. Then what? What is your plan? In your a4. So you go h6, it's going to be g6. So you have to try to open black's position as quick as you can, and you must do it real quick. So first you need, this pawn needs protection because I want to move the knight. I cannot move the knight and give up the e5 pawn. The correct way is bishop f4. Now my knight is ready to move. Now you may go knight h2. This knight coming this way. Suppose he goes bishop, I don't know, b7. Here we have to do the right thing. It's very difficult for white to open position on king's side unless we force black to move one of the pawns. Once black moves one of the pawns, we're going to have a bunch of targets. Let's look at it. If you go knight g4, that's the way they used to play earlier, in earlier years, then you go h5, then you go h6, it's still very difficult if it, if to break through. Here is the right way to do it. Knight with knight on h2, knight on h2 is extended by position of the knight. You're going to go knight g5. Now you want to play queen h5, forcing h6. And then not to move this knight. Leave this knight here and go knight g4. See, it's not, it's not even a matter you want to sacrifice knight or not. This is something you must do. Position requires this extreme approach and you have to do it. That's the, either you do it or you don't play this opening at all. So that's the way you'd have to do it. Now, Knight g4 creates very big threat of knight takes h6. This particular position is lost for black. So black has practically no, cho no choice but to take the knight. 
and then you take <coughs> simply back with a pawn. Now this position cannot be defended. White threats are knight f6 with a deadly opening of the king's position and also the other threat that may be very serious is bishop f3 with the idea of king g2 and rook h1. This is going to be nothing short of a mate. It's going to be directly mate. It's, um, now, I don't want to go through all details how we're going to mate him. Just believe me, this is a mate. And you can check it you know, by yourself on a computer. This, this position is absolutely hopeless for black. And there is, after you go knight g5, <coughs> let's see what are other ways for, suppose they go, and queen h5, suppose they simply take bishop takes g5, and they don't want to play h6. Okay, we take it. Um, now we're going to go knight g4 and now the knight f6 no matter what black does. Knight takes e5 is, is simply is simply losing because this is just crushing here. And stop to stop white playing knight g4 and knight f6 is impossible. You can practically abandon here. Um, well, let's try something. I don't know. You, you can, suppose rook e8, knight g4, knight f8. Well, maybe rook d8 he would have played. And on knight f6 check, king h8. Uh, how many ways to win this position for white? There has to be several. Uh, well. What? Yeah, bishop f3 may be the easiest way. And then to go king h2. I'm sure there are a bunch of others quicker. Maybe bishop knight takes h7, bishop e4, and king g2. But th this is good enough. Because after taking and knight g6, that's something you should be aware of. Bishop h6. Okay, let's see. This is the position. We have to consider g takes f followed by knight g6. Actually, this is the position. On the other hand, you don't have to play knight f6 check yet. You may wait. Go bishop f3, king g2, rook h1, and then do it. There is a um, 94 move, you can go, what are the other ways to play? <coughs> Maybe simply go A3. Well, now, A takes. How can black make big compared to uh, this? Those pieces cannot move. On 94, we can go simply rook c1. And followed by c3. Eventually knight f6, we're going to strike with knight f6. Actually, what I showed before, what after knight b4, I want, I want to point something. After knight f6 and pawn takes, uh, what happened, we just been taking the wrong way. The king is on h8. This should win. E5. Do we have E5 here? <coughs> What's that? <coughs> yeah, if, if E5 is not possible. Because, no, maybe possible. Queen H6. Yeah. Bishop H3 contains no threat. Actually, bishop h3 da, does bishop contain. Does contain threat. Rook g8. Oh. 
Bishop takes c6 and then what? Right. You have to take all the f7. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, that's not bad actually. This is. Well, we have some. We don't have immediate crushing threats here. But how much does black have here comparing to our threats? We want to go King G1 here. Threaten to mate. It's not black, like black has a lot more here. Also threatening G4 and this large this night. Must be very exciting. I know. <laughs> no, but what? This is the plan. Now, how you conduct this attack? I'm not saying that you have to do. There is one, one other point I want to make here. When you go knight g5, that's definitely the right way to play this position. Definitely, you you keep one knight on h2, and you go knight g5 this position here. You go knight g5 here. Queen on e2, rook on e1. Uh, you go knight g5, and suppose black continues, and now you want him to go h6. Uh, you go queen h5, I, I show you the other way to play. And after bishop takes g5, hg. Uh, and now they go a4. Uh, you can also go this way. Knight f3. And knight f3 to prevent knight coming from. And then go bishop h3. And to play g6 at some point. You see, if you play g6, it he doesn't want to take with f pawn, and taking with h pawn may be even worse. Some kind of position like this may be very dangerous now. Knight g5 is coming. It's not really clear how to defend this position for black. He may go rook e8. But then knight g5, this, this is nearly the forced mate. So we can go just to put the rook on h file somehow. Of course, he has f6, then we take him. This hangs. Very dangerous position for black. Well, you are just attacking practically for, for nothing. You gave, gave up like a half a pawn. There are various different ways to play. But uh, the thing you have to remember, that, and very important, is when you reach this position, don't go knight g4, because that's how you're not going to achieve anything. You have to be successful in this position you must make him play h6. Uh, since he cannot go rook e8 because then queen h5 attacks two pawns, so you must either let him take it, make him take the knight, or go h6. And we just saw on h6, um, on h6, this position, actually this sacrifice was played in a very by Botvinnik, like you know, many years ago. This is no defense. This is definitely over. This is definitely over because knight g4, bishop f3, and king g2 cannot be stopped, and as well as knight g4, knight f6. This is simply over. Now, when we play this way, Suppose the same variation, and black tries to delay castling. One of the tricky ways to play for black, black tries to delay castling on the king's side. 
and they go B6. You can see this frequently played by black. What they want to do, they want to go queen c7, bishop e b7, and castle long, followed by g5 in one of them. So then, this position, uh, in this position, one of the good ways to play for white is just to take the pawn once they played b6. If knight takes, you can even go d4 now. This gives you some advantage uh, for white, guaranteed some advantage. If pawn takes, let's get this pawn back quickly. E5 is not good here. After rook E1. Do we see here? Anything good happening for us? Can anybody see anything good? What? Which one? What? Yeah, that's correct. This position is real bad for black. White gets the pawn back because if knight takes, knight takes. Eventually, black is going to end up taking with a pawn and then queen h5 check, followed by queen takes knight. And you see black's position is wide open and they are undeveloped. And no castling. Black is lost. And nothing will change if they take with the knight first. We just take. Obviously they cannot take this knight and if they castle, they also lose after simple knight c6. If they go bishop b7, then we're going to go knight e6. <laughs> so it's all kind of problems may happen. The general idea here, well, you have to know a few subtleties. So let me quickly run through them. This is the key position. Knight f3, knight f6. Well, of course you can ask, what do we do if black simply plays symmetrical positions? Then we get to one of the variations of King's Indian. This is like a brief introduction to what the King's Indian attack is. So in order to, for you to clearly see what the plan is, this is the position you will get most of the time almost like a 70-80% of the time. D3, knight c6, knight d2. Those are all universal moves and you make them no matter what black does. And then you go e4. And now you see, you play e5, you have to remember, only after black castles, not before. Because position you don't want to get is when he goes b6, bishop b7, and castles queen side because this position, we can spend an hour analyzing why this position is not good, and we can spend a few seconds to tell you not to do that. It's the easiest way out of it. So, uh, so you play e5 after a castles, and if he goes b6, there is a useful move, you take. And now he has two ways to take. And if he takes knight d5, just because he weakened this diagonal, you immediately open the center. And if he doesn't want to take any castles, you can open even more. And now bishop opens and 95 comes. So that's going to create real problem for black. So, but if they take back with the pawn, then you have two ways to get an advantage. So first you can get rook e1 and knight e5 which gives you a nice game, but second way to play this position also d4. Because you have to know, no matter which way he takes on d4, this pawn sacrifice is very temporary because on c takes d, if you simply go knight b3, you're gonna get next move. And now, what is b6? He's gonna put bishop on b7 on a dead diagonal? No, you're gonna take on d4, he's gonna have weak pawn, 
you're going to have good peace development and you're going to definitely have a good position. So this is the way what we want to do. So the real subtle thing to, subtle thing to know is that you don't go e5 before he castles. Once he castles short, your game plan is clear. Actually, how do we do with moves here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, you don't have to go if Well, actually, you can go e5 now. Knight d7, rook e1. Queen c7, queen e2. And now you have clear plan. Knight f1, h4, knight h2, bishop f4, knight g5. Just as we described it here. Well, this is just like a, just an ABC of the King's Indian attack, and of course it's a lot wider. But if you compare this as opening to other openings, so suppose you make first move e4, how many openings do you have to be ready for? 100, 200, yeah, 300, okay. Well, if you go d4, bunch of, if you play this opening, you have to know few systems that black may play, maybe a handful, like what, three, four different ways, and if you feel them, if you know deeply what your plans will be, what you need to do, what you will not need to do. Actually, this DVD will be coming out in a matter of days, and I'll be widely analyzing this, but what you need to know first, what the position, before you make a selection, do you want to play it? Do you want to use it as your weapon? You, I'll just introduce you what type of positions will you will be getting and what you're going to be playing for. It's not necessarily a sissy way to play opening. That some people, oh, you play this because you don't want to get involved in some kind of, con you know, uh, uh, the controversy you have to come. No, this is full-scale strategical battle that may turn in a very, um, uh, very strong attack and a very good plan. Well, this is, as I said, to uh, learn fundamentally King's Indian attack, you need to know a lot more. You and you, what's that? Well, it, uh, it's made, but it's not produced yet. It's an, in a production. Gotcha. Yeah. If you sign up now, you get 2% discount. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any questions? Yeah, the, well, that's, that's, that's another line that's possible, okay. No, it's not, not even close. Okay, uh, let's see, I, I, I see what he wants to say. Okay. He's supposed to be on my side, now he's, uh, never mind. Okay, now let, 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 let me show you what he means. He wants to be developing pieces differently. First of all, you make first move knight f3. Now, if they play knight f6, that is not possible. So, suppose they go d5. Here is what he's saying. So, we're going to go g3. Mm, I don't know, c5, d3, knight c6. Keep the knight on g8. I, I'll go show you. Bishop g2. E6, castle, bishop d6, knight d2, knight e7, e4, castle. Yeah, they, they thought for a, for a period of time that this is the way, this is the refutation. Because now rook e1 and e5 is not nearly as effective because bishop is going to go to c7, knight to g6. And e5 pawn is going to attack. But if we go knight h4 here, don't push e5 yet. Bishop is on d6, 
he is expecting e5. So we're going to go f4, and we're going to go g4, and we're going to run this pawns. And for him, it's very difficult to find use for this bishop. Or after f4, we can go e5, and now we can go even c3, knight f3, and d4. So the f6 is not really going to work. So this is, you, you need to play it precisely. This continuous, but again, we didn't cover a lot of different other possibilities for black. So, but basically, there is no line that can uh, refute. It's not a forced variation that, like a take, take, and you get made. It's a, it cannot be refuted. There are various different strategies for black to play, and white has its own ways to try for advantage. Okay? So I would definitely, if you don't have very solid opening for white, this, you know, I played it for, for a couple of decades for white. So, and I've done really well as little cool. If you are black and somebody plays this against you, how would you pack up? I will consider myself very unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, you see, this opening does not guarantee you big advantage. This guarantees you the game where you have clear plan, you know what you want to do. But the same goes with your opponent. So there are ways to play. It's always, you know, there are two, two ends of, uh, of it. So if, if this is good for white, then I should play it for black. Then I should play it for black. But if it's good for black, why should I play it for white? No, it, it doesn't work that way. You get playable position. Oh, uh, unfortunately, everything comes to the point who is a better player. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.